What's up guys, Jivan here bringing you another video. Today I'm bringing back another episode of the How to Win in Arena series. You guys always blow these videos out of the water. And so here is episode 5. In this video I'm showcasing 3 of my wins, they were all back to back to back. And in each of these games I was W King, so I'll slow down some of the fights and break down what I did to win those fights. But anyways, as you can see I landed Pleasant Park and took out that first guy easily, didn't really do anything special there. And then I saw a guy pushing up from gas station, and so I pushed back at him. I was trying to get him boxed and end the fight fast, but I wasn't able to get him. I start playing a lot slower because I'm low on mats and I don't want to run out of mats and just be screwed. I'm able to end this fight when I realize he's standing next to my wall <laughs> and didn't even realize it. Anyways, after that fight I rotate over to bridge just to get some extra loot, and I run into a llama, so I am big chillin'. After that I'm just rotating around trying to find somebody to fight because I have insane loot. Couldn't find anybody so I just get a bounty and then push over to where I think they are. Just an FYI, if you're ever playing arena and you're in the center part of the map near Colosseum and Salty Towers, you're gonna get third partied pretty much every single fight. As you can see, it happens to me here. As soon as I took out that first guy, another person pushes up and another person. So when I have two people on me like this, as you can see I make a box so that I can kinda scan the area, see what's going on. My end goal is to get them to fight because if they start fighting, I can be the third party. I see them start fighting and so I go for the third party. I get this pretty big hit on him and so I'm looking for an opportunity to either get in his face. As you can see I try to phase into his box with this cone. If you walk into an edited cone or a ramp while breaking from above, you'll just phase right through the floor into their box. So right after I did that, I placed a ramp and then just finished it. As soon as I finish the fight, the other player pushes up and so I have to branch out and get my own box secured. And then I try to apply some pressure back to them and they hit this insane left hand peak shot on me for like 150 damage. And then this fight goes on for so long. This player was playing really well. As you can see, they're applying pressure to my walls and taking cones in my box and stuff like that. While they're doing that, I'm paying attention to what builds are mine around me. That way I can make escapes if they do take the things. And they were taking everything first try. But I'm able to survive here because of my awareness of what walls are mine because I'm able to escape after they do peace control everything. That's basically what counter peace control is, knowing what's yours around you and claiming things around you so that you can escape if they take your walls. Every time he takes my wall, I escape out the side with like a side jump or something. These long fights like this are the type of fights I recommend you VOD review. Try to look for edits that you choke, moments where you give them angles on you, and things that you could have done better like better right hand peeks, stuff like that. Just look for ways that you could have ended the fight faster because I left this fight with no materials. So I'm down to my last mini and I have to pop it here. And here's an example of something I did wrong. When I'm making this edit on him, I know he has low ping and is probably going to try to take my wall and peace control me. I should have had a cone in my box so that he couldn't have got me stuck on that cone. This fight came down to the wire bro. We were holding angles on each other and I just had the better peak. GG's to that dude. After that I rotate back over to this man's house, the pancake man, and everything in here is glitched. I don't know what happened, but I couldn't pick up big pots, I couldn't break anything. It was mad glitch, so I decided to just get out of there. And then shortly after that, this happens. I just don't even know, bro. Anyways, I just say screw it, and I go find some white health, and then I look for a new fight. I find someone chilling here in this shed, so I push that. I pulled out my AR to try to bait him to make an edit on me, and instead he makes a great escape, and I just follow him up and keep pushing. And before y'all say zero ping, this man wasn't even holding his wall, he was popping a chug splash, so. I'm able to get the quick kill there just by placing the cone in their box and doing the boppage. And then I'm just chilling because there's no one really close to me until I see this dude bouncer and I'm able to push that. I knew I had a major advantage on them health wise and so I'm just looking to psycho into their box. I'm applying a lot of pressure with my AR and yeah eventually I just get in. He was just holding his build out trying to hold the wall so it wasn't really risky for me to jump in like that. If they're holding their shotgun out at you, yeah you probably shouldn't psycho in like I did there. You could try to fake psycho in so that they try to pre-fire you and then you psycho in after they waste their shot. Then we move to the moving zones and I see two people fighting on edge of zone so they're probably really shambles. I'm just keeping pressure on, get the kills and then I get ahead. It's just a 1v1 and I was kind of trolling. I was trick shotting and stuff so I got pretty weak here. I was playing really dumb. I still got the win but I probably should have healed up if I really was serious about this but I got the win anyway so GG's. Solid game, solid game. On to the next one. 
Next game, I land at Holly Hedges. I really didn't get much off spawn, and so I rotate behind the hedges, as you can see here. This is what I do at Holly. I try to figure out which side has the least amount of players, rotate behind the hedges to that side if I need more loot. I get a tag on them, but I still don't have a shotgun, so I rotate and keep looking for one until I get one, and then I push in. This got a little bit chaotic because I didn't see the second player jump behind me as so I got pinched between them for a second, but I just got up to high ground and one of them didn't have mats, so I just 1v1 the person on high ground. I had way more loot than both of them, so I wasn't too worried. I just didn't want to get stuck between them on low ground. After I got that first guy, I made a push on the second dude and this guy predicted me going this way really well. I didn't think he would know I was going there. Like as soon as I made the side jump, he was already looking at me, crazy. Either way, I got him and I had good loot, so I start rotating across the map, trying to find people. And once again, I didn't find anybody until I made it to this uh, man cakes building. As you can see, I'm just applying pressure from a bunch of different angles until I find a place where I can actually get in. I start pressuring from the top here because he had nothing in his box. And once he drops me in, I'm able to claim the wall and ramp. He hit me so hard, I should have set up a right hand peek from the outside from the start, but either way, I got the finish here. There were no third parties, surprisingly, so I just rotate further in, find somebody else to fight, and push from the left side of their box. That way, I have a right hand peek on their wall while I'm pushing. I see him go into that far box, so I take this wall, and then I have another another right hand peek on his wall. This guy was just holding his wall, which is not a good idea. For example, if I'm holding a wall against somebody, I expect not to be able to hold the wall. I expect that they're gonna take my wall so I know my exit points just in case they do. As you can see, he went for an edit right after I took his wall because he just assumed that he was gonna be able to hold the wall. I have zero ping and I never expect to be able to hold a wall. I always back up instead of push forward after they break my wall. He should have flipped his cone up and gone out the side. That way, in case I did get the wall like I did here, he would have been safe, you know? That's a tip for high ping players. Anyways, after that fight, I push up to this person and just turn on my controller aim and then this truck comes out of nowhere. So after that insane stunt, I start fighting this guy. I get him full boxed here and then he just psychos forward and I'm able to hit a big shot because I was prepared for it. I was aiming down my sights and everything. Then I'm able to get him full boxed again. I edit out the side and set up an angle from out there. I should have set up another window peek there, but it's all good. So then I'm just chilling in my box looking for somebody to fight. When I'm sitting in a box in late game, I'm not sitting in a box to camp for end game, you know, I'm looking for someone to push. Looking for somebody that's kind of split from the rest of the map so that we won't get third party. I see this person up here and it looks like a good fight to take so I push. I was absolutely destroying him and then I just got in to finish it. Shortly after, I got in a fight with this guy and he was box fighting from two boxes away and I hate fights like this, I despise them. I was able to get a good hit on him and then he pushes into my box. He managed to slip out, I got him really weak, but I was struggling to push up to him. There's a big old tree in the way. Eventually I get up there, I'm pretty sure he's healed up at this point, and I do the push that I talk about all the time. I box up next to him and push his wall from the left. That way if he edits on me, I'm able to back into my box and protect myself. That fight, my zero ping worked wonders, and I was able to finish that fast. Then we skip ahead to late game. As you can see, I bounce her ahead from inside my box. That's the safest way to do it. I see this dude over here, and I saw that he didn't have his back wall taken, so I try to get it, I get it, and get the free kill. I get a full refresh from him. I have max mats. Big chilling for this end game. So then I just get ahead and I'm starting to spray back at everybody. If you can stay towards the front edge of zone and just spray back, you'll be able to make everybody else shambles in the game. You'll be in the best position to win. I get a little more elevated here. That way I don't get held beneath the mountain if it pulls up. It ends up pulling back down and I see somebody down there that I can push real quick. I pressure him as much as I can. I'm just pushing his wall, trying to get in. If it took too long to get him, he would have just gotten away or else we would have gotten sprayed up by the other players. So I did it as fast as I could. And eventually I pick up that kill. So I could have taken a little bit more time and picked up that big pot, dropped my sniper. That probably would have been the move, but a little missed opportunity, it's all good. As you can see, when I'm trying to bounce her ahead here, I'm trying to build walls, but I get a little too far away and can't hold my walls anymore. So I get beamed. I'm able to pop some heals, and then at this point, it's two other players. I know one's on high ground, he's the biggest threat, so I'm trying to pressure him. I'm waiting patiently, trying to look for an opportunity to deal some good damage to him, and I see that he's not connected by much. He's connected by this ramp and connected to my builds. So I edit my builds, break him down, and then take high ground. 
As soon as I get high ground, I just start applying pressure to both of them like crazy. Just doing these Tfue peaks where I jump, take a shot, build a ramp. Eventually I deal enough damage and I get this first dude out of here back to La Bay. Then it's just me and one other guy. As you can see, I try to cut him off with this cone. If I would have had a cone on top here, I would have been chilling, but he was able to take that cone and get through. Would have been able to end the fight right there, but it's all good. After that, I said, screw it. I'm just gonna go to high ground. This is so free and got the dub. And then we're onto the third win in a row. Let's see what happens. As you can see, I go back to Holly and I land at the same building, rotate behind the same hedges, just farming up some mats as I rotate. This time I had a shoddy and shield, but I didn't have any spray weapons until I got to that building, got some spray weapons, and then pushed up. I caught this dude off guard and was able to get him really quickly. Then I was farming up mats and I got beamed. Here's a good example of what I do when I'm weak and getting psychoed. A lot of people in this situation would just keep tunneling away until they can pop some shield, but they're just gonna keep on psychoing you. You're gonna waste so many materials. What I try to do is I try to get on high ground and try to get some safe tags on them. I take advantage of the fact that they're psychoing and playing kinda dumb because they know they have a health advantage. And so I'm able to get some safe shots on them, but I only take the safest shots. Once I get the health advantage on him, I just start pushing like crazy. I don't even care about healing anymore. And I got that quick dub. Anyways, we're on a later fight in the game now. So this fight, I was peace controlling really well, edit coursing really well, getting a lot of different angles on him. But eventually I caught myself. I wasn't setting up the best peaks. So I slowed down a little bit. The rest of this fight, I focus on not only peace controlling him, but then I take my time and set up really smart peaks. As you can see right about here, I get him in this box with the ramp and then I reset my wall and set up a right hand peak. I just slowed down here and made sure that I set up some safe peaks so I didn't take too much damage. This next fight, I just annihilated this dude. Straight annihilated. Once I blocked his fire shotty, I knew it was over for him. Don't get overconfident if they waste their fire shotty though because they might have a backup shotgun. But in that situation, I had a major health advantage. So in this fight, I do something really special. As you can see, I get him under my ramp here. A lot of people would just make an edit, but pay attention to how I edit here. I edit so that he doesn't really have a good angle on me. I'm very patient with my edits when they're under my ramp like this. I see him turn to edit out the side, so I take the quick shot, and then the other edit, I just do something he does not expect at all. Just be unpredictable if they're under your ramp like that. In this fight, I got a pretty good health advantage here, so I'm just trying to find an opportunity to get in on him. Eventually I get this wall and as you can see I edit a window, place a cone in this box and I instantly have a right hand peek. That's a really good move to do if you take somebody's wall. After that I see some people fighting in storm. I kind of let them have their fun but I just take snipes at them while they're doing it. And you know I'm going to hit my snipes, come on. The other guy pushes up furious that I killed his opponent. And I don't want to get stuck in storm here. He probably would have died if we fought there just to storm. But I just bounce her ahead, get into the safe zone and then I take him out really quickly. When I see them psychoing in my top like that, I build a ramp out the back and take a quick shot from behind. They usually don't see that move coming, but then I just did the double edit down and got him peace controlled. At this point, there's three people remaining and I see an opportunity to fight this guy. It starts out with us just fighting for high ground, but then he drops and I waterfall down and claim the wall in front of him. That's one of the peace control moves in Raiders peace control practice map, but he was able to get up the side because he owned those walls but I get above him real quick here. And then I do a sloppy double edit from above, but I peace control his sidewalls. He's stuck in front of me and I am able to get that kill. And then at this point, it's just a 1v1. I hit that nasty snipe on him, so I have a major health advantage. And so I'm just applying pressure, trying to get an opportunity to kill him. And you'll see how he dies here. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. You guys always show so much love to this series and I can't thank you enough for that. If you guys wanna see more of the How to Win in Arena series, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Don't forget to use code JiveNTV in the item shop to support me in a huge way. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.